Hey guys, so welcome to this video. Um, if you've never been to my channel before, I'm Lexi. Was good. I'm an NPC bikini competitor. Um, I have a passion for fitness, nutrition, and sharing that, you know, evidence-based value with you guys. There's so much misinformation out there. Um, I want to be a part of the positive part of the fitness and nutrition industry, not the part that solely wants to make money off of your lack of knowledge. So, I want to make this pretty basic um, because I do get this question a lot of, uh, you know, how do I lose body fat, okay? Weight, losing weight is different than losing body fat, which is why I'm not a fan of the scale. And I'm not a fan of the scale because you could be actually making changes to your body, but if you're so tunnel vision focused on that number on the scale, being the sole determinator, the, the sole determination of whether you're making progress or not, you will quit like like that. Okay? There's been times where I have lost complete like like my body has changed for the better but my weight only moved like one or two pounds and I completely thought I wasn't making progress even though I was I was losing inches off my waist things like that so before I go on a ramble now um, how do I lose body fat so the number one thing of course is to make sure you are in a caloric deficit and maybe you hear that all the time maybe that's the first time you've heard that but what a caloric deficit pretty much means is that you are burning more calories than you are consuming and this used to confuse the shit out of me when i first started i was like what do you mean by that so i have to like if 2000 calories is like maintenance that means i have to burn like 2500 calories i have to burn 3000 calories like that's impossible so it's it's kind of confusing right but what people think is like they where they get confused is they think that they only burn calories just by working out so your total daily energy expenditure is how much your body burns you as an individual burn how much calories you burn energy calories same thing um, when we're talking about food and calories that is energy is chemically a source of energy for your body just by living just by standing me moving my hands and everything I am burning calories your total daily energy expenditure is made up of a few things so let's say I burn daily 2200 calories that's how much I burn by the end of the day a lot of people will be like oh my god like how much did you burn like while working out things like that there's so many different factors and that's what we're going to talk about your NEAT NEAT stands for non-exercise activity thermogenesis in English it basically means the the calories you burn doing things that aren't exercise so literally things like typing uh, me moving my arms right now walking to the kitchen back and forth if you have a job that is you know is more active um, if you have a desk job you have a lower neat um, things like that um, even twisting your hair that is all a part of that non-exercise activity that is one thing a construction worker is going to have a higher neat than someone who works a desk job or a waitress versus a you know computer engineer I don't know you know this person will have a lower knee and this person will have a higher need that person will burn more calories dependent on everything else that they do so that is one factor a way that you can increase that is by you know uh, tracking your steps if you are more sedentary throughout the day you're gonna have a lower knee if you are more active throughout the day you're going to have a higher knee which means you're gonna burn more calories now don't get obsessed and be like I'm gonna walk to the kitchen you know every hour to like do something it, that's kind of a good way to get in some activity but you don't it's not something you have to obsess over your body adapts pretty easily to your knee the next factor that is compiled of your total how much calories you burn by the end of the day is your basal metabolic rate so how much you burn 
surviving. So laying in bed, doing absolutely nothing, breathing, that is your basal metabolic rate. If you were to do nothing all day, your your sex, your height, your, uh, uh, your weight, how much body fat you have, you know, how much muscle you have, things like that. That is how your body will decipher, you know, your energy balance in your, your basal metabolic rate. So when people say, I have a fast metabolism or I have such a slow metabolism, like that is just something that is thrown around a lot and it can be adapted and changed very simply if you understand these factors. So you can find your basal metabolic rate through several different calculators online. I can link some below. Um, now you have to understand that these will not be 100% accurate or 100% exact and it never will be. Um, so just take them with uh, a grain of salt and use it as a tool in your journey. So now that you found your basal metabolic rate, you know if you're sedentary or if you're pretty active, there are different ways to find your activity level, which is compiled of your NEAT, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, and how active you are, like how much you work out and things like that. So you can determine your activity factor, your activity level using a chart like this. Um, so this will help you to plug this into your equation and find out your maintenance calories. Um, so for example, the let's say I'm a nurse and I work out three times a week and it's not pretty like, you know, intense. So my non-occupational activity would be moderately active, I'm a female, and my occupational activity is heavy because I'm a nurse and I work 12 hour days, um, so it would be 1.6. That would be what I plug into my equation. I'm going to put all of this in the description to make it very simple for you. We want to find your maintenance calories, which are the amount of calories you can eat and maintain the body that you are at. You can also find this out by tracking for seven days straight everything you eat, whether that's in a journal or a MyFitnessPal, and however much that calories is by the end of the day for seven days straight, or the average for that week, that is your maintenance calories. Now we want to know your maintenance calories because this is where we will create the caloric deficit. So say you need 2,000 calories to maintain your weight and you want to lose body fat, right? So let's just keep it simple with the math and say your maintenance calories is 2,000 calories a day to maintain the body that you're at. You want to lose weight, so you cut 500 calories from your maintenance to be in a caloric deficit of 500 calories, leaving you at 1,500 calories consumed daily, which by the end of the week would be 3,500 calories, um, which would be a pound of fat. So a pound of fat would is typically 3,500 calories, right? So you know, look, if you eat 3,500 calories, you're gonna gain a, a pound of body fat. So if you're in a caloric deficit of 500 calories for seven days, 500 times seven is 3,500. So you would be in a, a, a pound down. That is the basic math of this, right? That is what it means to be in a caloric deficit. That is what you have to do to lose body fat. Now. I recommend when first starting off to not to go so drastic with your deficit. Do not go from 2000 to 1500. I recommend going from 2000 to, you know, a 10 to 15% um, from uh, deficit from your maintenance. So, you know, go from 2000 to 1700 or 1800 for like a week. Then that next week, drop another 200 calories. Then that next week, do, drop another 200 calories. Then maybe do a refeed, which is basically, you know, like a, a free day, I like to say. Not a day, a free meal or something, or give yourself a free meal. And you can track this, you know, in an Excel sheet calendar, in your notes, to make sure that you are going to make progress. 
that's why it's very very simple if you just follow the plan and follow the numbers because numbers don't lie right you know that if you're following the numbers you're doing everything you need to and if you're not losing weight you either need to wait for the whoosh effect or you know there's other factors to take into account you may have heard the term macros tracking your macros um so what are macronutrients macronutrients are the nutrients that your body uses in large amounts macro meaning large nutrients meaning nourishment to your body so do you have to track macros not necessarily as long as you're in a deficit and you're consistent you will lose body fat you want to make sure that you're not getting all your calories from only carbs and fats you want to make sure you're getting some protein in there as well so learning to track your macros will help you to refine your your physique i guess goal process and it will teach you a lot it'll teach you a lot i learned the most about portion control like if i do better with higher fats and lower carb or if i do better with higher carb and lower fat like it's fun to experiment um but to keep it simple you can lose body fat by just tracking your calories ne the next thing a lot of people ask me is like well do i have to eat like six times a day um you know things like that no you don't have to okay um you should do your meal frequency based on your lifestyle if you're a nurse you know or someone who is out and about all the time get your calories and divide that by like like okay say okay well i like to eat three times a day so divide 1500 or whatever your calories are by three so 1500 divided by three is three 500 calorie meals a day You can separate it, right? So you don't have to do 500, 500, 500. You could do like 600 and 300 and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, so break it up however you like. Now, that's why 1500 is so little calories, but you wanna make sure that you're spreading them evenly throughout the day so you're not super hungry at night and give in to cravings and things like that. That's also why I said slowly get to that deficit. Don't just go from like 2100 to calories to like 1500 or 1200 because I, you'll be good for a week, but you're gonna go crazy on a binge because it's too drastic for your body. Extremes are easy, moderation is hard, but moderation is compiled of consistency, discipline, you know, and long-term weight loss so long-term weight loss maintenance okay and that's the goal here but at the end of the day it all comes down to the deficit another way to put yourself in a caloric deficit than doing that is by you know working out you cannot burn off what you ate it is so 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 hard and so much work and so much effort when you literally just could have not had it in the first place treadmills, Apple watches, that kind of thing. Those have huge variances in how much calories it says you burned. My fitness pal will subtract those calories from, you know, say if you went on the treadmill for an hour, it'll subtract it and give you the food back. It does not work that way, I promise you. And you can try that and let me know how that works out for you because I've done it and it's just a pain in the ass and you end up staying exactly where you were. So, Another way to put yourself in a deficit, uh, of more of a deficit, is let's say your maintenance calories are 2,000 calories. You wanna eat 1,700 calories, like that's how much you're eating daily. But then you also do 30 minutes of cardio every day and burn 200 calories. 2,000 minus 1,700 is 300 calorie caloric deficit. When you add 100 calories or 200 calories from 30 minutes of cardio that's a 500 caloric deficit so you're putting yourself more in a deficit together with food and uh working out instead of just eating 1500 calories you also don't have to be active at all and just eat 1500 calories so there's different ways and just by trial and error you can figure out what works best for you in my experience the best way to lose body fat is by lifting getting into strength training because it also creates and manifests this love for training and 
you build muscle. The more muscle you have, the more calories you burn on a daily basis. Resistance training, so, so resistance training, strength training, um, and involving like hit circuits, and then some cardio as a tool, best way, honestly. Also, I recommend looking into intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is a great way to balance your hormones, your metabolism. It has great benefits um, on your, your body's healing process because you're stopping eating at a time and giving your body a, uh, a time period to, to not focus on digesting food, but to focus on healing your body. And it's just great. It has great benefits. I highly recommend intermittent fasting. Um, the goal of intermittent fasting as well is that, you know, you have a feeding period, so you're eating closer together, so you're fuller um, throughout the day. So to recap, you need to be in a deficit, a caloric deficit to lose body fat. You need to be consistent, of course. You can find out your caloric deficit by finding your maintenance calories and subtracting 10 to 15% from that maintenance calories. Slowly, you wanna start slow, so give yourself like maybe like a 12 week period and do that math out. It doesn't have to be 12 weeks, but it, it's good. I, I highly recommend getting a coach or someone that can guide you through this process because it can get confusing and frustrating. And you know, someone who knows what they're doing can take a lot of that stress off of you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and subscribe to support my channel and see you in the next vlog.